House Bill 132, Delegate Cardin. My favorite committee. I love the Ways and Means. I love coming here and just listening to your hearings. So it brings back great memories. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, John Cardin, District 11, asking for a favorable report on House Bill 132. You all have heard this bill a number of times before, and the indication I've got from each and every one of you is that it's a great bill and that you want to pass it. And we just need to have the political will to make sure this happens. Um, this is about consistency, transparency in elections, clear rules, and um, meaningful policies, and making sure that we are not putting ourselves in a situation, all of us, where we are able to and interested in doing things that are shady on the edge and not quite as transparent as they should be. What this bill does is it says that um, all entities that are able to provide um, campaign finance uh, uh, money to our committees um, should be equal and the same, and there shouldn't be any inconsistencies in that. Right now, there is a law that says that um, casino license holders are not pro are prohibited from making contributions, but sports wagering um, and the sports book license holders are permitted to. And in fact, it is just, it's chocolate and vanilla. It is Pepsi and Coke. They are both ice cream. They are both sodas. They should both be treated the exact same way. And there's no reason why we should have this one licensing entity that should be prohibited from making contributions. Um, and I can, if anybody wants, I can go into the history, Madam Chair, of how this rule came in. I think the only person in the room besides me who was here back then is your staff um, council who was there next to me when I was chairing the election law subcommittee here. And um, we fought against this amendment, which was basically part of the agreement to allow MGM to come uh, into existence. This was part of the deal to make that happen from some legislators, and they will remain nameless at this time. None of them are still here in the legislature. Um, but I just wanted to encourage everybody to look at this in a way that let me be the bad guy and get all the bad press about letting these horrible casinos be able to give money. But the fact of the matter is, is that in order for us to all be treated fairly and correctly, we need to make sure that it's transparent. And the rules are kind of shady as to whether a license holder who owns another company can make the contribution, still make the contribution, but is it violating the rules and is it just bad press that's going to come, which happens every year with all of us. There's a news article I can provide to you. I did not give it to you in your testimony this year, but I can provide to you from John Wagner, former Washington Post reporter, who many, some of you may remember, there's a, a gentleman named Josh Kurtz, who I think many of you know, who wrote an article a number of years ago about how legislators just aren't sure exactly what the rules are, and it would just make it so much clearer and easier. It's a tough vote because there's going to be an onslaught of press right at the start, but as soon as it's allowed through, it will be fine. So I'm asking you, let me just take the heat on that. I don't care. I'll survive. I've survived best pre bad press before. I'll survive it again. And um, and I hope that we can pass this bill. Thank you. Thank you. And for those of us who were not here on this committee when you were here, were there any, if you can recall, moral um, feelings about not receiving money from casinos at the time was yes. that one of the main arguments? Yeah, I would say that it was. Uh, there, there was the main argument. Uh -huh. That was certainly part of it. That was that was one of the one of the narratives that was being able to be used. Of course, we're able to reject money if we want to. I mean, there's nothing stopping us from saying I don't want to take money from those people. There's right. certain groups that I don't take money from right. happily. Um, however. Um, the main argument was that this industry had a, for some reason, had a particular propensity for impropriety, and therefore they shouldn't be allowed to give money. And there was absolutely zero evidence of this that was consistent. There was it certainly, there was empirical evidence of a, a wrongdoer at some point, 
but that is true across the board. And I think you can find that in every industry, there are going to be a few bad apples. So why should this particular license holder be designated as somebody who's not appropriate to make contributions? So are are legislators permitted to take uh, contributions from individuals in the cannabis industry? Absolutely. Are legislators permitted to take contributions from someone who has committed a crime like murder, assault? There's no, no prohibitions against that. And they can take from um, from doctor from lawyers, lawyers who represent criminals, lawyers who represent um, terrible uh, companies, um, and very ethical and decent people, and from the people who vote for animals and for um, why should any particular industry? And by the way, um, the funds that we get from this industry funds a tremendous amount of the very important programs that and for education and other things that you guys are the ones who make those policies and you do a great job of that. Uh, Delegate Buckle. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I kind of in the same vein, I won't go over it again, but it's legal to take contributions from sports gaming entities, right? FanDuel, DraftKings. I hope it's legal because God knows I've, I've done it. I suspect yeah. many members of this committee have taken it. <laughs> my, my, my law license is very important to me. So, you know, I, I that's legal, right? Right before you came in, I mentioned that this is like Coke. And so I, right. I described it as Coke and Pepsi, that sports uh, sports books, sports gaming uh, license holders, um, which are offer on to its purposes the same as casinos and how they oftentimes Gamble. run their business, their gambling entities, and they are permitted to, but uh, ga- gaming, specific gaming license holders are not. And so we also have a variety of Maryland businesses that I like. I think they fill a niche that that they operate. You know, we call them bingo parlors, but essentially their machines are are very similar to the average person to a slot machine. They exist here in Anne Arundel County and different counties in Southern Maryland. They're also free and, and legal to to give donations. I hope that's true as well because I think they may have given members of this committee myself donations the, as well. When when I when my freshman tour, we took a we we actually stopped at one of these places. And this is before um, casinos were actually legal. And um, I thought I was in a casino. I did not, I, as an as an amateur, I did not know the difference necessarily between those two entities. Right. And we, we could take money if uh, if an entity that, a uh, nonprofit entity that does, uh, we have a lot of volunteer fire companies that do bingo, make money. If they want to make a contribution to you or their members, their leadership does because they're, they're someone in your community, they're, al- they're allowed to do that, correct? That's correct. Okay. So we take money from a lot of different gaming entities, just not the six casinos. And you can take money from the different entities involved in horse racing, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Delegate Carter. Delegate Ebersol. Well, thank you. Uh, thank, and we we have nibbled around the edges, but really, th- these are decisions we make as legislators when people offer to finance our campaigns if we agree with them and feel like this is a, an entity that we would like to support us. Is there any other business that that decision has been made for us other than casinos? As far as I know, no. So we're, we talk about all the gambling. If we're talking about any business in the state, we can make that decision as legislators, right? That, this, this is the argument that I made when I was fighting against this amendment right. back in 2006. The only thing I'll point out is, does your jurisdiction have any casinos in it that would that would be a reason for you to be supporting this bill or sponsoring it. No. Thank you. As far as I know, no. <laughs> Delegate Young. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Delegate Cardin. Quick question. I mean, considering that the uniqueness of this bill, has it been evaluated in any way, or rather this prohibition, has it been evaluated in any way from a free speech perspective? It sounds like a clear writer's. <laughs> I would, if if I had to guess, I've had this conversation with the minority leader. I have, if I had guessed, if somebody challenged this, I think it would probably go down on First Amendment grounds. Um, so that's a great question. Um, I don't think that the casinos have challenged it because they they they're saving themselves some money. I guess they got what they wanted, right? Um, they're always looking for new things, but at the time that they were coming into an esta- into, into the establishment. And and starting to to get going, there was this this was the the thought was more of let's stop it now as opposed to thinking about the long term consequences of the First Amendment rights. And I think that now I think that if somebody challenged it, it would clearly go down. That's a great question. 
Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Delegate Cardin. That concludes the testimony on House Bill 132.